Hi, you guys. Welcome back to another edition of new indie patterns. Um, this time we are going to be covering all the indie patterns that were released in November. If you're new here, this is kind of a little bit like a first impression video um, where I look at the patterns um, like and assess them, you know, for fit and um, we talk about different fabrics and just kind of give my general opinion about the patterns themselves, except for this time I have seen some of them on social media. So I have had a bit of a sneak peek and maybe have already formed a bit of an opinion. <laughs> but either way, it's a really fun way to look at patterns um, with someone and maybe be introduced to some new pattern companies that you hadn't heard of before. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first one is the Made for Mermaids Pepper Puff Sleeve Top. Um, this is a P no, no no this is a knit top and sweater full of options. Choose from and here I'll pull up this photo so we can see some of the options. Oh, that's really cute. Look how okay. Um, choose from gathered puff banded sleeve in short half long with Okay, short, okay, what am I saying? Gathered puff banded sleeve in short half and long lengths with a short cuff or with a long cuff. Four neckline options, mock, turtleneck, scoop neck, v-neck, and boat neck, wow. Five body options. We have a hemmed slim fit in high hip or top length, so like cropped or regular length. Three gathered banded options high hip with short band, high hip with tall band, or regular length with a tall band. Wow. Okay. This is really one of those patterns that like, you'll never need a puffy sleeve top ever again. This is like a one and done pattern. Um, here's like the mock neck, scoop neck, V neck, boat neck. And then we have the different links with the different bands. Wow, really cute. Let's look at some of the some of the makes. I know that um, Made for Mermaids is size inclusive. I think they go up to like five or six X. It might be kind of hard. I don't. I really don't like it whenever they do the three. I I get why they put three pictures on, but it's really hard to see at the normal at the normal thing. Um, this is the long sleeve with a long band. The sleeve still does seem a little bit long like before we get to the banded part and also now that i'm looking at it this might be a little bit long too maybe she just made it too big there's another that must be the slim fit made for mermaids always provides a ton of photos so we're just going to go through a few of them to get an idea of it you know what's interesting is the puff is kind of disappearing like i'm not really seeing a puffy puff puff, you know what I'm saying? Like I thought it was going to be way puffier, but I'm wondering if people are just using like a drapier fabric and so it's not standing up to the puff very well, or if the puff is just, you know, a subtle puff. Subtle puff, that sounds funny. Um, like I wonder if you used like sweatshirting or something, if it would come out puffier, or if it's really just kind of not meant to be that way. Hmm. It doesn't really look like the line drawings, which is a little bit disappointing if I'm being honest. Plus, I just don't know about a banded, a banded top, especially if you're wearing it over pants, maybe banded but tucked in or the regular link with no band. Yeah, that's a little bit puffier. I think it's for sure gonna depend on the type of fabric that you're using. Yeah, that one holds up to it a little bit more. I think you need a mid-weight or more um, kind of fabric. Did they talk about what fabrics they recommend? Um, No, unless it's in this long. No, no, it's not. Yeah, so I would suggest if you want the like puff sleeve to really stand out, maybe use a fabric with a little bit less drape. So not all of your sweater knits are going to be, you know, created equal for this pattern. Um, depending on, you know, how much of the puff you want to see. Okay. Next we have Chalk and Notch came out with the Aria 
Um, this is a bubble shaped woven top with elbow length sleeves and elastic hem casings on the sleeves. Okay. View A includes a high back with bias or face neckline option. View B includes a low back with ties and a square back facing. Both views have narrow or cropped ruffle hem option. Okay. So a decent amount of options there. Um, this feels helpful how it's all just kind of like, you know, bulleted out. So you can just really quickly read through and see what is included. And especially because the, this is linked like hyperlinked. So you can just click on it and it'll take you right to the hashtag. Same thing with the Pinterest page. I kind of love that more details in the description. Okay. So view a high back with bias view a high back with facings. And I'll show you the difference in those. If the illustrations aren't really helping then view B low back with facings. Here's the body measurements, the full bust, A, B cup, C, D cup. That's nice. It goes up to 58 inches. So pretty size inclusive there. That's also nice. Choosing fabric designed for a light to medium weight woven. Um, a lighter weight fabric will fall closer to the body and a medium weight fabric will maintain more of a bubble structure. I love that they kind of describe it that way, explain it. Medium fabric width, yada, yada, yada. Okay, great. And then notions wise, I don't think we need a lot. Interfacing and then elastic. Yeah. So this could be one of those. What's the yardage? All views. One and a half, two yards. Hmm. Oh, is that 45 inch? Yeah. Okay. What's the 54, one and a half yards? Yeah, it must be a pretty roomy sleeve. I was thinking it could be a one yard wonder, but still one and a half yards. It's a pretty big scrap, but it could, you know, you could make it work out of just like a little bit of leftover from something else. I know that I have um, one and a half yard cuts lying around. So here she is. That's the zoomies I'm going to get. Oh, the ruffle hem is really cute. Oh, I wish it zoomed in a lot more. Um, so when you have a bias facing versus a faced facing, the bias is going to have a narrow like stitching line and almost like a separate piece. It's going to be the top and then it's going to be like bias that you will be able to see from the outside mostly, unless it's turned under. I don't know how it's finished. Is it single bias tape or double? I don't know. A facing is sewn to the neckline, turned inside completely. Sometimes it's top stitched, sometimes it's not. It does look like they are doing a top stitched um, facing. And also, I'm pretty sure, wasn't it grown on sleeves? Let me see, hold on. Yeah, so there's not even a sleeve like seam. This is very, very beginner friendly. It's basically a dolman sleeve with some gathers. So you get a lot of practice at elastic casings. There's the low back. That's cute. Great. Cute. Yeah, everybody's kind of looks the same. I do like how on this version without the little ruffle, you just tuck in your elastic casing and it kind of gives like a bubble hem. That's kind of nice. I want to see the hashtag. Let's see if this pops up easily. That Oh, I was going to say, is that it? Okay. Here is the Instagram. This one looks, oh, I see. Yeah, I mean, hmm, probably not everybody's style. And it obviously really depends on how you style it. I think with something really slim fitting. What skirt is this? This skirt is so cute. The Evelyn skirt, adorable. Um, you know, I think, well, here's one with like a flowy bottom. That's kind of cute too. And look, she did make it kind of scrappy by putting this, um, see bits of leftover linen scraps She with this color blocking. She kind of did her own thing. That's really cool. Oh, it's actually lots of linen scraps. That's really interesting. There's a little one cute. All right. One more. Let me find something. Yeah, I think defining the waist is really important, whether it's with a slim fitting bottom or a flowy one, as long as it has like a defined waist, um, I think you're good to go. But for sure, look through like some of these fabrics that they use. This is a double gauze. 
that one feels particularly light and breezy and I like how she left the tie off. It doesn't look like um, if you don't have the tie, it doesn't look like it's going to fall off your shoulders, but I could be wrong, but it doesn't seem like it. Yeah. Really cute. Really, really cute. I love that. Really sweet and simple. Um, what was the price? $18. Oh, it's hard for me to justify something so simple for $18. I can probably just draft this myself. Um, yeah, that's a lot. I was thinking maybe closer to 12, 13. I mean, again, they're allowed to ask for whatever they want, you know, however they justify their pricing, but 18 feels like a lot for something so simple. Okay, next up is Notches Patterns. This is their Dilla blouse and dress. Um, this one has plant, uh, pleated lantern sleeves. Dress or top. Choose from different sleeve and neckline options. With this set, you can make up to 27 different garments. I love whenever they figure that number out. It's always so exciting. Like that first pattern probably has like a gajillion. Okay, yeah, really straightforward and to the point with their description here. I love that it has English, French, German, and Dutch. It's worldwide. Worldwide here. All right, so not a ton of pictures. Let's, is this going to make it big? Yes, thank you. Okay, I'll accept your cookies. Yum, yum, yum. I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so we have a high neckline. We have this little pleated bodice with a little gather underneath. I, I don't, I'm going to look at the others, but this feels like, is it supposed to hit just below the high boss or is it supposed to be empire waist? But then this is the real star of the show. This pleated lantern sleeve. It really is stunning. Yeah, it looks like it's actually, this one hits a little bit more at the high bust, but it has a square neckline, short sleeves, super drapey. The fabric that they chose. Okay, keyhole neckline to get you in it because um, it is such a high close neckline. The pleats carry on to the back as well of the bodice. Oh. Okay, so high neck, square neck, v neck, long sleeve, short sleeve. Oh boy. Oh gosh. Sorry. <laughs> um, what does it say? Long sleeve, short sleeve, sleeveless. And then I'm sure that there are length options as well. Yeah, like this one was midi length, like mid ankle, I mean mid, what's it called? Shin? Knee length. So cute. I love these photos. Yeah, the details of that one are really, really fun. It kind of reminds me, I was going to say anthropology at first, but it's not anthropology. It's free people. It reminds me a lot of free people. And I think that they probably used a linen on the first one. And this is some kind of like rayon maybe. But I think it could be really great in so many different types of fabrics. I don't think they talked about fabrics, but um, so many different types of stable fabrics even like I'm thinking like the double gauze and um like light like uh still structured fabrics but lighter weight than this one this one is very crisp and kind of weighted but I can imagine it like a blend between the orange fabric and the blue fabric where it's structured but still a little bit drapey and you can find that within lots of linen categories some cotton categories maybe like a blend like a like a rayon linen would be really cool. I don't know, but you definitely want something where that sleeve is going to stand out also. So you do want it to be, so not a rayon linen. That's not what I'm thinking. I'm just thinking like a lightweight, crisp linen or cotton or like even like a, not an eyelet seersucker maybe. That could be really cool. Something along those lines. All right, this is the Copper Creek Patterns Petty Pants. And this is a little bit confusing now because it's 
the Do It Better Yourself Club, but they also have Copper Creek patterns. So I don't know if they, I don't know how these are, these people are partnering or if there's just one person now. I'm not sure, but this is their new pants pattern. Uh, pays tribute to the fabulous fit and fashion of the 70s. Um, supportive bottom weight woven fabrics. Wide leg. Um, a button fly or zipper fly. Ankle capri with a raw edge or capri cuffed hem. And optional front slant pockets. Intermediate sewist and beyond. Okay, I have thoughts already just based on these photos. Um, the fit is not great. You can see there's a ton of drag lines. Um, and the drag lines point to the problem area. That's how you know where it's stemming from. So these are all pointing to the outer thigh. And you can see here that her side seam is very, very crooked. So there's just not enough space for her bum. Um, so not necessarily the pattern's fault, but if you're gonna put this as your like lead image, I kind of think that we should have something where the fit is pretty spectacular. So lots of different testers it looks like. Can I not scroll through these? Oh, I hate that. Here's the button. There's two on the waistband. Nice, big, deep waistband. I love that. And then four going down. These are the optional pockets. Yeah, in general, it's feeling... Oh, I don't know. I'm not seeing a decent fit on anybody yet. Hands in pockets, so it's really hard to tell. I also feel like the mid-rise is not really helping. Um. It feels like it's hitting everybody at a really funky, funky spot. It's affecting some more than others, but it says that there's a high rise option. Oh no, it says they're all high rise. That's not true. That's not her. The high rise for her would be way up here. It's not that it can't work, right? You would just have to put in the time to adjust the rise, adjust the circumference of the full hip, um, to make sure that it was going to be suitable for you. This is, okay, so they do have misses sizes and plus sizes. Um, made for someone who's 5'5", five, five, which feels kind of on the short side. So you would think a high rise for a 5'5 five, five person would be really, really high rise. So, but it puts the full hip at... 34 inches up to 67. So very size inclusive. I do love that. But yeah, you'll be needing to do like your probably the most um, when it comes to your pant alterations. I have to do them every time. So for me, it's not like that different. But if you're used to just making patterns and going for it, um, this one might not be it. What was the price on that one too? I feel like they're usually pretty affordable. Um, okay, it's free. Oh no, $11, yeah. I love that the price point's right under 12 bucks. That feels really good to me. All right, this is the fold lines. Wait, okay, again, it's confusing. It's the fold line pattern shop. This is the Lina Line Patterns Arthur Bomber Jacket. Is this how you get to Lina Line? No, these are just all of the linen line patterns. So I think I'm just on the fold line on accident instead of going to linen lines website. My bad. Okay, so 12 to 19 pounds. Um, PDF is probably going to be the $12 option. Yeah. Um, Arthur Bomber jacket, sewing pattern, comfortable, practical, um, beveled patch pockets on the front and flap po flap pocket on the sleeve, raglan sleeves that widen at the elbows and top stitch seams. Okay, so for those of you that have been around the channel for several years, you know that I have been on the hunt for a bomber jacket with a button front and set in sleeves, and I promise you that does not exist yet. <laughs> so if anybody out there is designing patterns, please, 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 please combine the button front 
with the set-in sleeve. There's plenty of set-in sleeves with zipper fronts. There's plenty of raglan sleeves with zipper fronts. There's button fronts with raglan sleeves, but no button front with a set-in sleeve that I have been able to find. And people have been on the hunt helping me find this for a long time, tagging me. And I think this one works. And to this date, we have not found one yet. So <laughs> just a shout out, putting in the universe, please help me. Okay. So, button, these are snaps actually, same difference, but, and then the rib knit little neckline, there's the raglan sleeve, that's the little arm pocket, it's like a two-piece pocket too, the top stitching's really beautiful, and then a ribbed weight hem, and then a ribbed um, wrist. Cute, and it's kind of like a little bit of a cropped length as well. Let's see. Yeah, a fold line would come through with the right little carousel for the photos. There's the back. Very simple. Yeah, it's definitely going to um, end at your high hip. Very kind of standard. Yeah, I mean, it's as cute as any of the other bomber jackets I've ever seen. Bomber jackets are adorable. This one just happens to have a little bit more flair with this little arm patch pocket. You could definitely leave that off. Um, but yeah. Nice. Okay. This is UK sizes 6 to 16, which puts us bust wise at 31 and some change to 39. That can't be right. Is that right? I'm not even a 39 inch bust. What am I missing? What am I missing? U.S. sizes 2 to 12. Is that it? Seriously? Wild. That's wild. Six sizes? Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, it is roomy, but still. Jeez. Okay. This is the sewing patterns by, I'm going to say Mason. That sounds right. Um, this is the Amalfi blouse. Very small font. Let me read it for you. $15, first of all. Amalfi blouse is romantic raglan sleeve top pattern. It features voluminous bishop sleeves with a bound sleeve cuff. The neckline of the blouse is gathered into a neckband that flows into a cute button placket. This pattern is best suited for intermediate sewists or ambitious beginners. It is easy to lengthen this pattern into a dress. You can even add side seam pockets and little belt. Are we noticing a theme for November's indie patterns? Very kind of like frolic in the field, you know? Um, lots of gathers, lots of big puffy sleeves that end in gathers. This one does have the button front, which is a nice detail. Raglan sleeve. I feel like we saw a couple like this too in the October indie pattern collection. Let's get to a different version. I was noticing how this was kind of shaping her waist, and I think that's just kind of by accident. I don't think there's actually that much shaping in it. Yeah, it looks like it's just kind of all pulled to the side and back a little bit. I think it's meant to be kind of boxy. Okay, here are some. I kind of am really loving a full, like, blousey top tucked in. You would need to make it much longer. Oh, she just tucked it into low rise. Okay, I like it tucked into high rise because I'm a high rise girly. But the normal length of it being high hip for me, I would bend over one time and, and it would come out. So I would need to make it much longer. Or you could even attach, um, this is a hack I've been thinking about putting on the channel for a long time. You could attach some little like briefs to the bottom and make it a bodysuit because you have all these buttons. You just pull it on, no big deal. Everybody seems to have wanted to tuck it in. Yeah, kind of equally as cute. Untucked with shorts. That's adorable. So yeah, a lot of fun options. Cute. 15 bucks is a little much, but not too, too bad. Especially if you do, like she said, make it into a dress or 
you know, alter it another way. Like maybe move the buttons van to the back and keep the front solid. You could kind of play around a little bit and give yourself more than just one view. I think that's kind of the downside and why I wouldn't, I don't think $15 is fair just because there's only one version. I would think around $10 for one version would be good. But again, they're allowed to charge whatever they want. I'm just saying like for me in terms of perceived value, um, 15 seems like a little high. Okay. So how seven, they came out with these moon booties. Okay. And I don't know, I'm kind of on the fence about them. I'm kind of like, I, I, are they just meant to be around the house? Cause if so, that's kind of okay. But I definitely don't need these kinds of shoes to just hang around the house. So I, I don't see the point in me making them, but it's kind of fun that there's a pattern like this that just exists. Um, so they are the ultimate slippers, puffy coats for your feet. Um, slip on booties are non foot specific. Oh, meaning no left, no right. I was like, that could be interpreted lots of ways. Um, the lining is slightly contoured. I don't even know what goes into making booties like this, but there's lots of information here. Foam sole insulates your feet. Maybe just because it doesn't get cold enough here for me to need moon booties, but yeah, let's see who's making them on the internet and posting about it. Oh, wow. Ooh, quilted versions. Wow. Oh, pfft. I recently Googled feet always cold and the results suggested, oh, wow, this actually got serious. I thought it was going to say, and Google said, make these moon booties. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, the little rifle paper company ones, of course. Oh, and fleece on the inside. Wow. That's intense. I want to see them on someone's feet. Oh, thank you. So cute. Oh my gosh, look. I mean, they do look warm and comfortable. I got to give them that. Here's a little video. Oh, they look more sturdy than I thought. Oh, she's like walking on the moon. Wow, people are so creative. I, I guess I didn't realize that the foam was going to be so sturdy, but it is. So those are fun. And this, uh, this pattern did come out right before the holiday. So maybe it was kind of like a little, you know, nod to holiday gifts too. Okay. This is the June pattern studio sweetheart neckline blouse. How fun and sweet is this? So we've got, I don't think Etsy does descriptions very well, if I'm being honest. Um, learn more. Okay. So sweetheart neckline, gathered bust area, three quarter puff sleeves, elastic on the cuff, high hip, no zipper. Okay. Seam allowance is included. Layered, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Happy sewing. Thank you. All right. Yeah, it's really sweet. So it's got this like sweetheart neckline with a little gathered thing widget here. And then these cool, like almost like shirred elastic sleeve bands and a little gathered shoulder as well. There you have it. I would like to see it on a human being and not just this mannequin. Oh, there it is. Okay. There's this. Hold on. What's this? Oh, I can't. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on. Yeah. What is this? That's a seam. Hold on. Let's keep going. There's line drawings coming. Yeah. Okay. So this seam needs to be a little bit lower right? This should be, or at least for this woman, um, under her bust, right? Not kind of on top of it. I think it is meant to be, um, more of an empire waist. At least that's what this photo makes it seem. But if you get it to fit like the, 
illustration, I think it's really, really cute. And I've been seeing this little elastic application everywhere and ready to wear. Um, I don't know how similar it is to Shuring. Um, maybe I can look at the notions that are required to see and maybe that will help. Um, but I've been seeing a lot of that. Also, I want to point out that even on the mannequin, that little seam was a little bit too short. Um, easily an inch or two longer here would, would really help. Um, but yeah, there we go. Lots of photos. Great. Okay, here's the size guide. Full bust goes from 32 to 42 and a half inches. And she's calling 42 and a half inches 3XL. That seems a little misleading. I would think 3XL would be in the 50s, 50 inches, or at least high 40s, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I don't think it says non stretch woven. This is how much you need. Other materials one centimeter wide, 200 centimeter long elastic. It doesn't say the width of elastic. So is it elastic thread? Is it, is it like shearing? Okay. Yeah. See this person here says had slight issues with the sizing. I can see why. I think that if you think you're making a three XL and it's going to be like a three XL, the stores, no, it's going to be way smaller than that. Um, you really need to take your measurements and compare it against a finished measurement chart. If one of those is even available. And that probably goes for all of June Pattern Companies, June Pattern Studios patterns. All right, the Peppermint Magazine pattern for November is the Bronte Bathers. Um, Peppermint Magazine offers free patterns. Well, they used to be free. Now they're pay what you want in $5, in $5 increments. That's kind of a bummer. They used to be free slash pay what you want. And so you could pay any increment one dollar, zero dollars all the way up. Um, this one you have to pick either way. It is a swimsuit. And before you're like, well, wait, it's November. That's so weird. Um, this was developed by swim style patterns. And I think that they are an Australian brand. So it's summer for them and it's Australia. <laughs> so I think that it was appropriate for them to come up with come out with a swimsuit. But photo wise, let's take a look maybe. Yes. So we have high waisted um, bottoms with kind of like a little bit of a cheeky view. I like that it doesn't look like diaper like I've seen in the past. And then like a straight kind of bandeau style um, top with um, ties uh, straps. Here are all the girlies. This one seems to have some kind of detail in the middle, maybe. Right, like a little cinch or tie or something. Same here. And whereas this one's kind of flat. Yeah, it definitely has that little scoop detail on the bottom and the top. So does that one. Really cute, cute ties, yep. I'm surprised this one doesn't have underwire. That looks very supportive. Okay, so this one instead of the ties has the adjustable strap. Oh, I don't know why I'm so surprised. It only has, it, wait, that is a tie. Okay, that's adjustable straps. Okay, and this one has this little twisty thing in the middle. Cute. And then the bottoms are the same. Front, front, back. Cool. Here is the body measurement chart. So in inches, we go from 32 inches up to 56 in the bus. That's great. This is an extra small to 9X. For the record, their 3X is very similar to June Pattern Company. So maybe I'm the one that's just confused about what 3X means. Or maybe because it's not a U.S. company. I don't know if June is or not, but um, they're sizing is just different. I don't know. But cute little bathing suit for sure. Keep in mind as the weather warms up here in the States. All right, Ellie and Matt came out with three patterns. I'm going to go through them quickly. This is the adult Yvonne spa day robe pattern. It's just your quintessential standard 
robe, not anything too, too special. Um, line drawing wise, can we make this bigger? No, we cannot. Oh, yes, we can. Okay. All right. So we have the banded front patch pockets, a little um, tie, and then in the back it has like a shawl collar. So not hooded, but it has like a little, oh, just kidding. There's a hood or a shawl collar. Great. And it also looks like two lengths, maybe more than that actually. Mid thigh, knee length, and then short. And then it looks like two different pockets, this little kind of rectangular one and this little scoopy one. Again, since this came out in November, it would have been ideal for holiday gifts. It does look really cozy, comfy, but yeah, just your standard robe pattern. And at $9, right? Yeah, their price point is always spot on. And I know for sure that they are size inclusive. I can't remember what size range they have. Sewing tutorial. Oh, here we go. So bust is 29 inches up to 67 and they're calling that a 7XL, 3XL. Yeah. Okay. This is more what I thought, but Ellie and Mac is a U.S. based company. So maybe that's just where I'm getting confused, but yeah, a 3XL for a high forties full bust that feels more familiar to me. Okay, this is the mm, Naika sweatshirt, sweetheart shirt, peplum and dress pattern. Wow. Oops. A really beautiful sweetheart neckline. Very fitted. This is probably for knits only. Yeah, really, really stunning fit. I mean, look at this on her. But it does have the princess seams with the little strap, I guess. You can do a flutter sleeve. You can do a couple different skirts or a peplum top. And then we have an even thinner strap. Yeah, so many options. Ellie and Mac is really good at providing all the options. That was the top. Here's the dress. You know, there's something about a knit twirly dress. They are just really comfortable. I like how this is giving like, um, kind of like corseted vibes, even though it's not corseted. I mean, look how on every single body type, it looks incredible. Everyone looks like a million bucks. Um, the fit looks really good consistently. That's hard to pull off. And I mean, even the execution of the sweetheart, I don't know if this is like a self-lined bodice and that's how these lines are able to be so crisp. But I mean, everybody's looks good. And that, I mean, that is really cream of the crop in terms of any sewing pattern when it literally looks so good on every single person, both in fit and also execution of sewing. 10 out of 10. This is great. So happy. Got nothing bad to say. I want one. <laughs> um, and again, the $9 price point can't beat it for all those options. My gosh. Okay. This is the Lakeisha crop. God, why am I skipping words? Lakeisha cottage crop top peplum and dress pattern. So this is, oh, a crop top with long sleeves. Okay. And it has this like gathered bust situation happening. There's the back or you can do a little cap sleeve with a peplum. The long cap sleeve with the long skirt with the ruffle. That's what she made. Super cute. I'm not entirely sure uh, as to how, mm, fashion forward this is per se. I mean, I feel like I was making these in like the 2010s maybe, but there's a reason why they were so popular back then. They are really flattering, um, especially in a knit fabric. Oh, she did a little sweet belt. 
yeah, I bet it's super comfortable. I don't know. Let's bring them back. Let's bring back the gathered bodice midriff knit dress. <laughs> it's really kind of cute. I don't know. I can also imagine it, you know, for my personal style, making it a little bit more like 70s vibes um, with like some kind of vest or it's like a corset situation happening on top or one of those like um I don't have one of these personally I don't think I could pull it off one of those like seen those like leather it almost looks like S&M like strappy leather belted thing all these straps you know what I'm talking about I don't know what they're called but here is this is an interesting thought down here I kind of love the idea of having, you know, contrasting fabrics where the skirt is sheer. That's a fun take on it. That feels a little bit more modern. Yes to these queens rocking these crop tops. A crop top is one thing, but like a fitted midriff crop top, that is like... <laughs> a whole other thing but yeah that is really cute it does look very kind of milkmaid um and that is actually very trendy right now the milkmaid situation so cute 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 again nine dollars same price or same size range as the others all right this is veronica tucker's free 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 noel pattern now it's not got a lot going on, okay? It's not going to be the most couture thing you've ever made, but it is free. <laughs> Off the shoulder, flowy dress. Um, wear with or make your own belts. Designed to be made into a blouse or dress of any length. You can also adjust the length of the sleeve. And you need some elastic for this. Um, any opaque mid to lightweight fabric. Heavier fabric wouldn't work due to the design staying up on the body by the elastic around the shoulder. So if the fabric is heavy, it won't be able to stay up. The reason a heavier weight fabric wouldn't work is due to the design staying up. Oh, if it's too heavy, it'll pull this all down. That's what she's saying. I thought she was meaning this was going to come up on the shoulder, but then she was saying down and that got confusing. So if it's too heavy, it'll just pull, 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 and then you'll be necky. <laughs> if you're using a sheer fabric, ensure to line the main body piece. Okay. Oh, okay. One of these. All right. Are we going to get anything regarding a line drawing no she does have does that mean australian dollar a dollar sign um gosh yeah i really would like to see a line drawing but i guess it's literally like squares sewn together with an elastic hmm yeah i need to see more no instagram hmm Okay, it is free. Let's remember that. And you can maybe, depending on your drafting skills, you can figure out a way to take this as a blank slate and, I don't know, figure out some other stuff. But I can't even see the bottom of it, so I don't even know what the hem looks like. It's just like a lot of... <laughs> It's just like a lot of fabric with elastic at the top. All right. Well, if you're into that, if that's your style, here's a free version for you. Okay. This is the Matchy Matchy Sewing Club. This is their Maker's Overshirt sewing pattern. $14. So they're really kind of like pushing the line there with the pricing um, in terms of being near or at the average for an indie sewing pattern company. Um, right these days, I feel like we're seeing mostly around the 10 to sometimes 20. So that $15 point really does end up being the median. 
All right, designed to be a casual, minimalistic, boxy style, button up layer, this easy to sew pattern has a wide shoulder line, multiple pockets, and simple front button placket. The shirt hits below the hips, making the perfect piece for layering. View B is a bonus view offering fun and playful color block. Okay, so it is a button front collarless little top slash coat. The stripes do make it really fun. What are all of these? Those are so cute. Yeah, the the sort of visual interest with the fabric really does kind of elevate it a little bit. Drop shoulder, I'm noticing as well. She just piled them on. I think she's got three of them on. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's fun. I could also see it in like a corduroy, making it a little bit more structured. I think a lot of the fabrics that they're using here are like mid-weight linens and cottons and things, but... I can see it out of a, like a really structured denim or a linen. And again, no line drawings. Oh, fabric shown. Love this. That's really cool. So cotton twill, linen, rayon blend, linen, cotton, linen, linen, linen. Sizing and fabric. Oh, here's a line drawing. So yeah, just one length. And then view B offers this one additional seam line where you can do the color blocking below it. I wish they would have shaded that in so you could, it was really clear what the difference was. But their um, bust sizes go from 31 inches up to 64. So 2XL, 2XS up to 6XL. All right, this is Friday Pattern Company's Pogo Nip Pullover, 16 bucks. Uh, perfect layer for all your outdoor adventures. Unlined pullover jacket that features welt pockets, sport collar, snap or button half front placket. Designed for woven or stable knits. Have a lot of fun with your fabric choice. Anything quilted, fleece, linen, Packing and carrying the pogo nip is a breeze with the fun and optional packable pocket. What? What? Let's see that. Okay, hold on. Okay, first of all, the design is super cute. I love how it's high hip length um, with this cute little elastic band, the kangaroo pocket. I love that the half placket is huge. That's like two or three inches two inches probably deep. I think that that is so flattering how this super big collar and placket frames the face. Love that. And then it has a drop shoulder, which you can see here. Now let's see if I can find this packable pocket they speak of. That almost looks like a top. Oh, here's the back. This must be the pocket. I kind of hate but they lined it in white. Like, I don't want to see that, but that's neither here nor there with this little button. It must all go into here somewhere. No, they're not going to show us the packable pocket. I, I know that that's it. And I'm, I don't know. I'm assuming, I don't know. How do you get, it? oh, you fold this in, fold this in, and then fold the top and the bottom and then turn it right side out or turn it inside out. So cute, not hard to execute on literally any jacket that you have. It's just a pouch on the back. But like, duh, like why haven't I thought of that before? Model fit notes, oh, love that. Notions, elastic, snaps or buttons, button and scrap fabric. Okay, that is that. Cool. Yeah, this is this is a good value to me at sixteen dollars. I don't know why. I can't explain it really. It just what my heart just tells me. Okay, so Sinclair Patterns came out with their Selma 
knit pleated neckline top and tunic. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, round and square neckline options, $11. And then this is how their photo thing works. But yeah, it's actually pretty hard to see, but it's kind of cool how um, these are all like pleats, like box pleats that open out into this little flowy situation. Um, so that is long sleeve, elbow length sleeve. Hmm, a little slim on the fit through here, which is why you're getting this. If the back hem were a little bit wider, all of this would flow naturally over her body. Yeah, there's the square neckline. It's cute. I'm trying to think of ways to style it other than with jeans or, I mean, I wouldn't put it with a pencil skirt myself, but. Oh, and then a nice big, um, I guess it's a neckband. Seeing if anybody styled it with anything other than jeans. So when that's the case and I'm just feeling like uninspired by the styling, then I'll just start picturing it as a dress. <laughs> and then that solves all my problems and I'm like, okay, great. It's a dress now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not that there's anything wrong with tops and jeans. I just feel, I don't know, personally to me, that's so uninspired. Um, you know, I want to do, so I want to make clothes that make me feel like I'm pushing the boundaries a little bit. You know, basics with a twist. That's just basic. Okay, Closet Core came out with their Fran pajama uh, pattern. And is it me or... Doesn't Closet Core, uh, who has the, uh, the other super, super, super popular pajama set? I thought it was Closet Core, but maybe it's like Grainline or somebody else. The, um, I'm getting all the names confused now. I want to say Jenny, that's wrong. Those are the overalls. I want to say Claire, that's wrong. That's the coat. It's the... Something's PJs, somebody's name. Oh gosh, you guys will tell me in the comments. But I thought that was Closet Court. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's somebody else. But the Fran pajamas. Okay, 16 bucks. And I mean, <laughs> don't get me wrong, this is pajamas, but I could wear this out. I would feel no shame in putting on some shoes, kind of like she's got, and hit the town in my pajamas um tailored details with a slouchy fit okay they look just as good in bed as they do glammed up and on the town yeah i'd say so um shirt collar cuff sleeve back yoke inverted back pleat button loop at the neck the pants are a straight leg slightly paper bagged elastic waist optional drawstring inseam pockets and back pocket it's available in alphanumeric sizing, a new addition to our size range. That's fun. Extra, extra small, which is a 31-inch bust, up to 4X, which is a 60-inch bust. Loves. Carolyn. Okay, so I'm not going crazy. That's what I was thinking of. Carolyn. So I guess this is just like their more fitted version, maybe? And this is their more boxy version? I love silhouettes like this where the hem like flares out a little bit. I don't know why. I just think that's really kind of chic looking. And they put her in this like Fendi looking fabric. I love that. Super chic again. Yeah, you can see how it buttons up here into your little collar. Okay, yeah. Hmm. This is cute. And I think that that's kind of an easy collar, I'm going to say. Simple collar. Ooh, let's watch the video. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know what happened. No video. It won't let me go forward either. Backwards?
Yeah. Nope. Well, that's a bummer. Oh, this is the video. Nothing's happening. That's too bad. Oh my gosh, now the whole thing is breaking. Okay, we're just going to skip all that. Anyways, yeah. Cute. I am kind of a little bit on the fence only because... This isn't anything revolutionary in terms of design, right? They just do such a freaking good job of making it feel new and fresh, like we've never seen this before. But if you really just look at the line drawings, right? Just look at the line drawings. We've seen, obviously, elastic waisted pants before. And this top is, you know, a boxier, oversized boyfriend, if you will, fit button down. So. Do with that information what you will. <laughs> okay, this is Sycamore Road, the Juniper Wrap Top. So I just reviewed all of the patterns from Sycamore Road in my last first impression video. I um, looked at all their patterns and you guys seem to really, really like them as well. This is their Juniper Top. I'm not going to talk too much about it because I kind of, like I said, just covered it, but it is a really cute wrap front top with this really great sleeve detail. I feel like that's what Sycamore Road's kind of underlying theme was was these like really big interesting sleeves and this is no exception um the wrap top does seem to fit beautifully and you know has a really cute sweet little length to it not a ton of options um included with this pattern in fact this might be the only one i'm trying to get to the line drawings while also showing you some of the, i mean it's a really nice pleated sleeve they have going on here um, this is the sizing, uh, that is a 20, no, 30 inch bust up to 57 and a half. Nope. We're back to the beginning, right? Yeah. Um, so no, I remember, was I talking about line drawings in the other video? I'm sure I was. Um, and it's 14 and a half euros. So sort of similar to the dollar these days. Um, I did feel like that price was a little bit high for like the simplicity of the design of the patterns. But at the same time, I felt like the designs were a little bit out of the box and a little bit fresh feeling. So I'd pay a little bit more to have a pattern that's not just basic, a pattern that I haven't seen before. Okay, Itch to Stitch has the Andes jacket pattern, 14 bucks, versatile and stylish high thigh length jacket designed to elevate your outerwear game, crafted especially for fleeced backed soft shell fabric. So you guys know what she's talking about with that. Um, it's soft shell on the outside. Soft shell is like North Face. It's like, it's not necessarily water resistant. Maybe water, is it water resistant and not water repellent? Whatever one where water can get through. <laughs> um, it's a little bit like that, right? Nylon-y, you know, and then has fleece on the inside. Um, this one showcases intriguing seam details for subtle shaping and visual interest. Um, lined hood, unlined body, water resistant properties. Okay. And drizzly or rainy weather. All right, cool. Cup size options, three piece hood, unlined bodice, sleeves with diagonal seam lines, princess seams from the shoulders, ample front pockets. Exposed center front zip, high low hem, and then the fabric again. Okay. Yeah, the slim silhouette is really nice. You know, for this type of jacket, typically, like when you think of North Face or something like that, the jackets do feel very kind of like boxy. So it's nice to see something with a little bit of shape. Yeah, these are the princess seams. I also feel like there's a seam here. I think line drawings are coming up here shortly. Yes. 
Oh, cool. Love the continuation of this scene into the sleeve. That just feels really smart. And then these are the same um, style lines that were in the little windbreaker jacket that I did the sew along for this time last year. Remember this like reddish burgundy fabric I used? I loved that detail. And for mine, the pockets were built into this. I want to say it was like a simplicity or a new look pattern. She went ahead and just did like zip pockets on the outside. But because there's a seam here, you could definitely do pockets that would be on the inside of the jacket if you didn't want to do these little zippy things. Refer to that sew along or that pattern if you want to see what I'm talking about. But, but yeah, this is really, really cool. And then did she, yeah, she has one with the hood on, but not with it all the way zipped. Um, for me, a hooded jacket, it has to stay up. Like I've made hooded jackets in the past that although are very cute, like the moment, like the slightest breeze catches it, it's falling off, which defeats the purpose. I'm assuming this little, like, I don't know, it looks a little more like enclosed on your face, um, keeps it up more. Right. I just never made one like that before. So really nice. Very good. All right. So we've got sizes double zero to 40. Um, it says C size chart tab. Why can't we just make this a hyperlink? Size chart tab. Okay. All right. Well, it's not that hard to get to. So different cup sizes from A to double D and it's not like A slash B slash C slash D. They're all have their individual pieces. That's really nice. Um, the hip measurement for this is 33 and an eighth up to 62. Really decent um, size range there. And then A cup is eliminated from her plus size uh, size range, but the B cup goes up to 60. Yeah, and she's really petite, so I think she really honors the double zeros, you know, and, and gives, it's size inclusive on both sides of the size range, on the petite side and the plus size, which is nice. Okay, this is the Hanbach wrap skirt from Daily Like Canada, reversible pleated wrap skirt. I love that Etsy does this. It definitely gives you that feeling of FOMO. Like, oh no, six people just bought this. Like, it's definitely like cool and popular. I must get it. <laughs> right? The video is so good. Ooh, nice transition. Yeah, really chic, right? Let's see the sizing. I like she gives this to me straight up from the beginning. Like, don't fall in love with the pattern yet. Check this sizing first. All right, so it is a wrap skirt, right? So the sizing at the waist is a little bit, there's some wiggle room there in terms of how tight you tie it. But the sizing chart is 24, that's what that says, 24 inch waist up to a 47 inch waist at the 3XL. That's really kind of incredible. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm surprised by that, to be honest. Now, it does require three to four yards of fabric, so she is a hog. She's a fabric hog, but I don't know. It's really kind of super pretty, so might be worth it. I love it with this little bat wing lightweight sweater. Imagine it too with like, uh, maybe like the first pattern that had that band, right? The puff sleeve that had the band where you could tuck your band in or you could even put it on top. But this is, this is a band and the top would have a band. So they'd kind of like blend in together a little bit. That could be really fun styling. I like the line drawing has like a little bit of movement to it. But yeah, just tons of pleats and like your traditional wrap skirt. 
But again, not revolutionary in terms of design. People have been making wrap skirts forever and ever, pleated skirts forever and ever. But I don't know, it just feels like the execution of hers, especially this photo, um, is just super inspiring. It looks very clean, right? There's, I mean, everything is, feels very couture the way that it's sewn. So that would give me inspiration and motivation to pay the $11 for it just to see the clean finish. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking I know how this is done, but, um, but just to be sure, I guess the, I'm, I feel like I would learn something from this pattern based on how it's been executed. And I don't know, it just feels really chic, even though it's kind of basic. I like the length of it. I don't know. Yeah, I'm kind of like fangirling over this, even though it's like the most simple thing that there is. Okay, so Madswick Patterns came out with a Rada blouse. $20. Okay. Rada blouse is a circular yoke with a billowy blouse. Oh my gosh, of course I love it. The sleeves are designed to hit above the elbow or wrist and feature three pin tucks right here. Oh my gosh, so far kept. And gathers into the binding sleeve hem. Three view options and instructions with two different hem lengths. 24 blouses possible with the pattern pieces and instructions provided. Intermediate includes, I love when they do this, sewing techniques such as gathering, pleat, binding, buttons, buttonholes, attaching a collar, stitching in the ditch, and for BUC, ruching. I love that they do this because intermediate is such a relative term. Like what's intermediate to me may not be intermediate to you. So you can look through this list of techniques and say, yeah, I know how to do this and this and this. Oh, I've never done buttons or buttonholes before. So do I feel confident in trying to take that on with this pattern? You can assess through yourself based on what you know you're capable of if this is going to be a pattern that you can execute. Here we go. <gasps> Not the ruching. That's the view C with the ruching. I love this. $20. Are you kidding me? Wow. Super, super cute. I love the yoke with the gather. I love the, there's the, this plus this pin tuck sleeve plus possibly doing the, the ruching. Oh, they're not going to let me make this big, huh? Oh, come on. For $20. Let me look at it close up. I can't read this. It's way too small. Yeah. And when I tap the photo, it goes backwards. So from what I can tell, view E, I mean, sorry, view A is the, the ruffly yoke pin tucks, button front, like bias bound collar, maybe a bit of a Mandarin collar. View B is the same without the buttons in the front. And instead it has a keyhole in the back. And then view C has the ruching that we saw. Then there's the long sleeve version. Okay. So that's what gives this 24 different options. But consider all the different lengths of this you can make. Consider adding um, a ruffled skirt. That's when your $20 really becomes like, this is such girl math. Girl math and sewing math combined. <laughs> when you can add, because it's such a, like from, from the bus down, it's such a blank slate that you could add all these details so that the pattern basically becomes free is what I'm trying to tell myself. <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay, sizing. Um This pattern is drafted between a B and C cup, 56 height, generous ease, but where's the size chart? Oh, here we go. View A. Oh, I thought they were going to go through all of them. Okay, here's the body measurement chart. High bust. So, huh, 30 inches to 54. 
right? Am I getting that right? Yeah. Yeah, size range 1 through 13. Gosh, it's cute. There's view A again, except this time that's the ruffle has this added little trim to it. Again, like to me, <laughs> in my in my justifying mind, that looks a lot different than the denim version or uh, the chambray version. Here's view B without the buttons. View C is just something else. I love it. It's a combination of this thing plus this fabric that they chose for it. Perfect. Literal perfection. I want that. I want that. I want that so bad. Okay. All right. Really cool. Good job, Mads. Matt, what's it called? Madswick. It's a new pattern company to me. Um, I'll review them for First Impression Friday here shortly. If they have, I like for the pattern companies to have at least five patterns first mostly so I have enough to talk about for a whole video, but also just to get a good understanding of what, what they're all about. Okay, this is Genuinely M's new Maple Square Neck Knit Dress. Square neck, kind of column-y knit dress. $12. Um, cute but functional. I love that this is first person. I think that for whatever reason, business owners are afraid to talk about their products in first person. But to me, it says... I made this. I designed this. I'm selling this. Like, this is me. One person behind all of this. Like, this really feels like a small business. But she says she wanted to make it bra friendly. So, um, flow around my body without feeling too clingy. So, there's a little bit of ease around the waist and hips. Um, some might even call Maple secret PJs or like that's how I feel. Fill the gap in my wardrobe, and this dress does that for me. Super easy to throw on with still feeling put together. Easily hackable into a top. There are two sleeve options. Straight fitted sleeve and a subtle bell. Um, 15 sizes, diagrams, quick and easy sew. Okay. Well, let's take a look. Genuinely M. Square neckline. There's a bra in there. She said here's the ease that she's kind of speaking of for the um, waist and the hip. Yeah, it doesn't look like much on the line drawing. Um, but looks really, I guess what I'm trying to say is like in the line drawing, it feels kind of frumpy looking, but whenever you get to the, on her body, the way that it's like contouring and skimming the body, it's actually quite a little bit sexy. I do like how from the full hip down, it's not clinging on her back thigh. You know, it kind of just floats away from, like a bit of an A-line, I guess, from there, which feels nice. Oh, okay, there's the top with the bell sleeve. Super cute. Size chart is a bust of 32 to 53. And hips is 35 to 56. So pretty decent job there. I love the bell sleeve. Do you see what I mean about the fit of it? It, it is definitely just like a column style knit dress, but it doesn't feel, like she said, it doesn't feel clingy at all. It feels really comfortable. Yeah, super cute with the sneakers. Illustrations, great. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I was already going to say that you could put a belt with it and that would kind of elevate it or like a vest or one of those. It's called a harness, that little leathery thing I was trying to explain earlier. Um, a harness with it, that would really elevate it as well. Yeah, great. And $12. Yeah. Does she talk about fabrics? I think a mid-weight fabric would definitely be best, mid-weight knit, but I wondered if she discussed that at all. I don't see that. So yeah, for sure for the dress, I think you would want something mid to heavy weight in the knit category. Uh, because it's not, I mean, because there is positive ease, at least in the waist and hip, 
what was it? What was the ease in the bust? Uh, did we get finished measurements? No. Um, so I don't know what the ease is in the bust, but because I know that there's positive ease in the waist and the hip, which means that your, your knit fabric does not have to be super stretchy. You don't have to have 100% stretch, not even 50. You could probably get away with 25%, again, depending on the ease in the bust. All right, and this is our last one. This is the Mary the Dressmaker Luna Dress Pattern. Um, this is it here. Okay, great. Okay, hold on one second. Uh, I wanted to see... Oh, that's really cute. A line drawing first because the website's a little bit, there's just a lot of words happening here. Key features, balloon sleeves with an explanation. And then, so I'm just going to read the key parts of all of this minus the explanation. So balloon sleeves, fitted silhouette, ruffle details, instructions, and versatile style. And then YouTube, um, sub along. After, okay, I said ships, it, the digital download will be shipped to you through email. <laughs> okay, I get what you're saying. Okay, so from what I can tell, without there being a line drawing, it looks like there's a yoke with a sweetheart neckline, a waist seam, center front seam all the way down, and then this little ruffle detail with a sleeve with a ruffled hem or a ruffled like wrist. I think that the colorway of this little sample that she made is definitely. Plus, where's the back? Uh, she never shows the back of it. So, hmm. I have questions. I think it's really cute and I'm very much intrigued but I need more. So I was looking for a Instagram or something. Yeah, I'd have to do some research to find some more photos. But 1164, that's not that bad. And then I don't know what these centimeters turn to in inches, so I can't really speak on the measurements, but knowing it's a US size 0 to 18, I'm guessing 18 probably in somewhere in the 40 inch range um, for the fullest uh, for the bust uh, but the hips on this one are also well the, all of them are it's fitted throughout so the bust waist and hip are pretty fitted but I do think it has a lot of potential I love the mini I love this little ruffle thing that's happening I just want more information on the website all right so that is going to do it for November's new indies. We have a lot of fun new patterns. I do think that there is a theme, right, with the like statement sleeve and the ruffles and the, you know, all of that that's happening. Um, but also some really good staples um, that can become part of your wardrobe that you reach for again and again and again. Um, let me know what you guys thought of these patterns. Leave um, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And that's going to do it for me. I will see you all very soon. Okay, bye.